So I've been looking around the web lately and trying to find info on how to sex a superworm or Zephobus morio beetle. So I decided to do another quick video covering the information I found and what I found online was quite sparse. So I decided to test it myself. I'll quickly go over the information I found and what I've seen for myself. It was this nugget that started the experiment, however, this was not satisfying enough for me. I have all the links below that I've been showing. These are the top results for how to sex a superworm beetle and how to sex Zephobus morio. The nugget I found shows the following and my tests against it. The males of the species seem to have a C right above their mouth parts. I found a pair of my beetles mating, and the one in the penetrative position had the C-shape on its face, and this one was for certain a male. Females seem to have a flat line above their mouth parts. I found another beetle within my colony that was laying eggs, and it had the same face structure that was described, so I know that this one, for certain, was female. The lightly colored beetles I've been showing are mine and just hatched, and I happen to get one of each face. I am going to set them up in a small enclosure of their own and see if I can catch them mating and laying eggs. Let's go over what I'm going to be using. A small insect carrier from a pet store or dollar store. Some ground old-fashioned oats. A toilet paper roll cut in half for hides. I placed a dish for water beads and another small dish to hold a slice of carrot. I buried the first hide and placed the second on top of it and placed both ends against the enclosure wall so that I could always see them while giving them extra surface area. So after placing everything, I introduced these beetles to their new home. Starting with the male. I do not like to grab these guys with the tongs, so I let them do the job for me, holding on as I relocate them. Both insects are still weak, however, they seem to explore their enclosure for a bit before going into their cave to eventually rest. The last thing I'm going to be placing is an egg collector. If you have not watched my video regarding this, click the video card above and give it a quick watch. This video is only a few minutes long. Since July 14th, they have been relatively idle in their enclosure. I checked on them multiple times a day, and they were always within their hide. A change happened around the 28th, and on August 2nd, I found the couple mating. I got a shot of both of their faces. We can clearly identify the male has a C shape on its face, and the female has a straight line on its face. At this point, it was enough for me to call it. The next step in my experiment is to add more females to the enclosure and see if I can figure out a healthy ratio of how many females a single male can fertilize, which is yet another question I have been unable to find an answer for. I'm going to be keeping the egg collector separate and also upgrading their enclosure to something larger so that they can have more room to roam and I can expand further with the experiment adding more females as I go. I intend on finding the ideal ratio between males and females for optimal superworm production. If you like this video and found this information helpful, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for more videos in the future. Alright, to quickly go over things again, we can tell a male superworm beetle or Zephobus morio beetle has a C-shape, or better yet, I'll call it a mustache, above its mouth. The females have a horizontal line. In total, from hatching from their pupa state on July 14th, the first time I recorded them breeding was on August 2nd. There seems to be a period that they are not sexually mature and do not mate. I constantly checked on these guys and they were very inactive for the first few weeks. And pretty much out of nowhere, they became very lively within their enclosure, so I started watching them more often so that I could potentially catch them mating, and I did. I appreciate all of you who have made it this far in the video. Again, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell for future videos just like this. Is there something you are curious about? Tell me below in the comments. As always, from the Gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.